So effectively this separates your joints, your controllers and your skeleton into separate layers which allows you to hide and reveal things as you need. So this is kind of important this sort of setup. If we go to our outliner which is basically a scene graph of everything in this scene. So window outliner. <coughs> you can see our basic setup here. So we have our shoulder and our joints. We have our ICO handle with its point constraint and we have our controller like so. They're all separated into their different categories. You should never really mix these together. Uh, basically because then if you do it's very hard to set up layers so you can reveal and hide different things. So keeping them separate is a good workflow or practice to be uh, getting into and also naming things as you go. Okay so this is nice so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this out of the way. Okay, it's not going to work like that. <laughs> so I will probably just hide it at this stage. And I'm just going to look very quickly at, actually what we'll do is we'll go to the next stage which will be setting up a, a mesh to be controlled by this object. So I'm just going to create a simple box. So let's close my outliner. So I'm going to go to my polygons and I'm just going to create a simple box here on the grid. Okay. On my right hand side I'm going to go into my inputs here which is just here. This is in my channel box which you can select by selecting this channel box icon here. I'm just going to click on it and expand it and what I'm interested in is my subdivision heights and I'm going to increase this to 2. And you can see I now have an extra cut around the outside of this box. Okay, so I'm going to go to my front view so I'm going to go to wireframe mode, which is 4 on the keyboard for your interest. And I'm going to go and edit this. So I can do this through my normal way, which is to go into your sub-object mode and select uh, the points. Or you can just hit F9 on the keyboard which is a shortcut for this mode and then we can go in and start manipulating the vertices as such. Now I'm going to change this to world. Okay, this is unusual. I've never seen it do that before. Okay, let's go to my face mode, F11. That will do for the moment. And I'm going to sort of move this into position. Okay, this is a little bit out of control. Maya, Maya, what are you doing? Okay. Oh, okay, okay. If I go to my tool settings. I probably have switched on reflection. Here we go. Which is exactly what's going wrong on my viewport. So there you go. So switch off reflection, you stupid tool. And we can stick with moving things around like so. Okay, much better. So let's go to my front view and continue with this tutorial. And I'm going to move this set of vertices down here from where my first joint is. It doesn't have to be exact. My next to the here. And leaving this one where it is. Just going to do a little bit of rotating. So R on a keyboard or go to your rotate tool here on the left hand side. Just to sort of match up what an arm might be, like so. Very rough, just for the example here. So this is my so called mesh arm or my geometry. So back to object mode by selecting my object up here or hitting F8 on the keyboard. Hit my P cube, which I'm just going to call my geometry. Like so, and I need to attach this to my bone chain somehow. So what I'm going to do is turn off my reference for my skeleton here, so I can select my skeleton or my supporting skeleton here. And I am going to switch to my animation menu on the tab here. And the one I'm interested in is what's called this smooth skin operator. 
which is basically this guy here. So selecting my bones first and selecting my mesh second, control shift. Okay, and you should see that my source and target is selected. Source is always represented with the white. Target is always the green. And I'm just going to hit my smooth skin operation or smooth bind. And once it's completed, purple indicates incoming connection. And you can also see in your channel box everything is grayed out, which means you can no longer move or rotate this mesh. The only way to move or rotate it would be to animate it. Like so. So effectively what we can do now is create one more layer. And this one I'm going to call geometry. Geometry. Like so. Okay, can I have unique names? Let's call it layer. Okay, and I'm just going to make that a reference so I can't select it. I'm going to turn my skeleton back into a reference. Or even hide it if I want. Uh, I'm hitting 4 on the keyboard or going to my shading options and looking for smooth shade all. I should be able to now select my helper here and animate my arm like so. Okay, so if I was to bring up my time slider now, so from display, UI elements, and switch on my time slider, and obviously I have nothing going on here yet. But if I grab my helper and at the first uh, frame, just hit S on the keyboard, which sets a keyframe, and you'll see that your channel box will go all red, which means key associated with the red color over here. Then go to frame 24, and I'm just going to move it a little ways and hit S one more time, and then press play. So there you go, you have an animation. Okay, and also just reiterating why we set everything up with zero or freeze transforms. It allows us to just sort of zero everything out. Bang, like so. Watch it that you don't zero to scale. Because this is what's going to happen. Your helper will disappear. Uh, but basically that's it. So you have successfully skinned a mesh to your rig. Okay, so that sort of ends our... Rigging primer for Maya uh, and the most basic level of how joints work, uh, how they affect your geometry via a smooth skin operation, and how we've set up an IK or inverse kinematic controller with a separate uh, controller uh, for animation purposes. And this is fairly typical of how you would go about setting up more complicated rigs. Okay, so thank you very much for listening for, to this tutorial.